Hello YouTube, uh, this is Matto back here again. I want to make this video just to explain uh, a couple of little things about uh, angle grinders. My father and I have had two angle grinders, one that was given to me um, uh, because one, I needed it for work and number two, uh, I didn't have the money to go out and buy one so somebody who I'm not naming gave me a free angle grinder. So let's have a look at this one first. As you can see, according to this, it looks pretty normal, like any normal angle grinder would. It's only a couple of small problems. As you can see, that right there is the innards of a disc. A disc, and here's the other end of it. So there's the two bits. A big lesson must be learnt about these cheap angle grinders. I'm not going to show you what brand this is. I mean the thing, if I was to wire it back into the PowerPoint, would perfectly work. But what's actually happened to this angle grinder is that at first we thought a disc had exploded. But that's not right. That's not it at all. Take this off here, it wants to be stubborn, I think. These are your typical angle grinders, are cheaply Chinese made. And you can find them all over the place. Um, a lot of your auto stores sell them. Um, really, really cheap um, tool shops, etc. As you can see, that ring there has been broken right along here. That belongs on it. This, after a lot of wear and tear, uh, not really wear and tear should I say, this angle grind has only been used about five or six times since it was bought new about three or four years ago. But after the vibration, after many a bit of use, this has torn away and of course as soon as it tore away it would have gotten stuck on the disc and it actually tore a brand new grinding disc into pieces and I don't know where all the pieces are we've only found one and somebody threw it out uh, my father actually threw out the, th the disc that broke so I'll show you exactly what um, went wrong with it other than that this is a good um, angle grinder, switch still works and if I had another part for this uh, it would be perfectly fine. So that's number one, I'm going to throw that in the bin now because it's absolutely useless. We can also, actually I'll go to the second angle grinder so let's put that there for a minute I'll show you the second one. And the second one is a more well known angle grinder. Again, looks in a very good nick. Actually this one's got replaceable brushes which most of them don't come with. Uh, only one drama. That's spinning the motor. When you do this, the gears are sheared. Now, this is an angle grinder that's probably been in use for about two years. Uh, it has done work on the odd weekend cutting uh, sheet metal and grinding things like on my trailer which is right there but nothing uh, much harder than that so you think that something like this would last but no and today it just decided to rip apart so let's uh, let's have a look what's actually happened to this I'm I'm guessing that the uh, gear the pinion on the motor has worn out, but anything's possible. These tools cost about anywhere from twenty to forty dollars for the cheap tools, and to be quite honest, if you're going to use it once and you're never going to use it again, fine. If you're going to use it every now and then. I wouldn't even bother spending no money. Actually, no. I'm actually surprised with this. Lots of grease in there, like normal. 
the problem with this is that the gears along there, as you can see, are very worn. I'll try and keep this in high quality for you guys. And also, the bearing inside here is loose. So that bearing being loose probably hit it to one side and started chewing this um, gear out here, which is just, you know, for something that hasn't been used much, even the grease doesn't look too shabby. Um, it's not like it's gone black. It's actually still your normal colour. This gear in here still looks okay. And the bearing, yeah, it's got a little bit of wear too. So, um, machines with very little wear, you got to be kidding me. Let's just pull out our brushes here. The thing, like I said, it's got to, if this machine was to last, as I can see there, it looks like the commutator's even got damage on it. But let's have a pull it apart after such little use and have a look at what kind of damage is actually in this motor. I wouldn't be surprised, the old machines used to use ball bearings everywhere. But nothing would surprise me if this thing doesn't even have ball bearings anywhere and it's all using uh, sleeve bearings. It doesn't take much to pull these apart. Four screws generally hold the motor in place on most models. Even a brand new model like this one over here which we had to buy today. Which is a AEG, which uh, for 70, $79 now gets you an AEG with a three year warranty. Very handy if, uh, if you really uh, want to keep it for a few years and use it a little bit more than just, you know, once every blue moon. So we'll take this off. got ball bearings. Well, from looking at that, the uh, the actual um, commutator is not that bad. It's actually, as you can probably tell, the gaps are still all in there. The windings don't look like they've been burnt. It smells okay as well. Now the unusual thing about this one too is the amount of play in there. Now I'd have to get my tool to get that actually out because of the gear that sits on the inner there to pull it out of the bearing. It doesn't actually sound too bad. That bearing there is absolutely cactus. I don't think they're meant to have this much movement but I'm no expert in these uh, in these motors so that's one bin job uh, if I had a spare gear certainly enough I would it's not worth it as you probably have known these things are eh, just will not even turn up Now, this one here, I've personally used this. I got it brand new in about 2007. May have been 2008 or around that time. I've used it a grand total of twice, and this time was the third time when this sheared off. So let's have a look inside something that's barely been used at all. Since the other one had a bit more use, I wouldn't say much more.
and yes uh, guys I did buy myself a tripod so hopefully no more shaky videos from now on so as we can see here this comes apart really easy uh, one big downside of this motor is probably that the brushes aren't replaceable they're soldered in or welded in uh, this will be a surprise when we open it up no, the brushes, if you can see this, is one shock to me. <clears throat> when we pulled out the brushes in the other motor, you probably noticed that it was held in by a screw or in a cap like this that was holding the brush down hard on the case. This one here, I don't know if you can see that let's give you some light right see that mark in there that is where the brush has been hitting so when this thing overheats it will just melt the case unreal I find that unreal and the brushes look like oh they're spring they're clip loaded okay so we go like this and that should unloosen, no. The bees brushes are pretty much set in for pretty much life. The brushes on these are a lot smaller in comparison. But, um, I don't know if you can see that. Yet again, another perfect commutator. Nothing wrong with it. This machine actually will still start up and work. Uh, there's no problem with the gears. It sounds a bit dry. Being a Chinese made machine, uh, anything's possible, but it is dry. And the screws won't even come off. Typical. Nope. Time to attack it. Some of these things. just very hard to work with. Hey, flat batteries. That's easy fixed. Like all uh, lithium batteries, they just stop when they're flat. They don't give you much warning. Looks like that screw ain't coming out for anything. Which is probably... As you can see, a lot smaller motor on this unit. Yet again, these things have a lot of Actually, you can see it in there how much play these things give you. A good gear set shouldn't give you this play, but notice that the bearing is tight. For how long? That's another another good question. But as you can hear, it sounds like it's dry. The bearing on the end is still tight. So this is actually a, a perfect motor and. Uh, if it was greased, it would probably last forever. But yet again, not worth the parts. I uh, wouldn't bother going out uh, getting parts of these when they're a $30 tool. So, I don't think I can even get in there with any pliers or any tools whatsoever. I'd have to cut that off with another angle grinder, which I feel like doing, so why not? Okay, so we've pretty much destroyed that screw. 
But now to try and get this open because that, that would have welded the thing shut a bit. I could have cut a slot in there, but look, that's going to take time, and I don't really want to take time doing this. It's just something that I just want to show you guys quickly. As you can see, there's your gear set, which is you know, touch the hot bit. Nearly no movement at all. This gear set in there, and actually that that bearing's already stuffed. In four use, in three to four uses, that bearing's noisy. Comparing it to this one, I can't really test that one, but you can probably hear that. That one's not noisy. This one's super noisy. So my suggestion is, if you're going to buy something that you want to use more than once, go out and spend a bit of money. Go out and spend 70, 80 bucks. Something that has a decent warranty at least. Um, not one of these things where probably the warranty is like 12 months or even not even that. Anyway, so I thought I'd just pull them apart and dissect them a little just to show you guys what's inside. One of these uh, angle grinders, these are both 100mm angle grinders, pretty much as small as you can get. With some of the things that I do, um, I need the small angle grinders, you can't use the big ones. So anyway, that's it for me. Thanks for watching.